All right, it is Wednesday night, and good evening, or should I say, good evening. This doesn't, this doesn't fit. No, no, it doesn't. Anyway, anyway, we just got back from B Dubs a couple hours ago. Um, ended up going to Oz again. Like, and the mom wanted to see it, so we went and watched Oz again. I'll say again, I really didn't want to like this movie. I'll tell you straight up. I thought it looked way too much like a rehash of Alice, and even some of the sets looked about the same. But when it came down to it, it was a really good movie, and a really well done movie. And I'll give props to James Franco for being able to pull it off, because he's definitely not something that's in his comfort zone. Franco's a great actor, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to find that out very soon that don't know already. People that watched Oz obviously will get an idea of how good of an actor James Franco really is. And he's not just the bumbling pothead he was in Pineapple Express. Of course, that was his character. That's not his real person. Well, actually, kind of it is, but he can actually act quite well. Like AJ said, I've never been a big fan of Rachel Wise. I think Mila Kunis is absolutely adorable. And I did like the fact that she put her own spin on the character, and I like the iconic laugh. Wasn't really Margaret Hamilton, but it was basically enough in there that you knew that it was the Wicked Witch, and it was incredible. I will give props to Zach Braff. He was very good, and I really enjoyed Tony Cox. I always enjoyed Tony, Tony Cox, actually. If you want a good Tony Cox performance, Bad Santa. Bad Santa all day, every day. One of a re one of the real, most really funny movies I've seen in a long time. It's very crude, very nasty, but you have to understand that's Billy Bob Thornton. So obviously, that's what you're going to get when you get Billy Bob Thornton. But Bad Santa is awesome. And I do want to give props right now to Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams in one of the most underrated, overlooked performances of 2012 last year with a, a film called Take This Waltz that was directed by Sarah Polly. A really incredible film, very well done film, very true to life film actually. And everybody's performances from Michelle Williams to Seth Rogen to Sarah Silverman, they're all just brilliant performances. I really love Take This Waltz and I really wish more people would have saw it. And I really wish it would have done more in the award season because definitely she deserved at least a nomination for that performance because it was phenomenal. And she was great as Glenda the Good. I think she did a tremendous service to the character. Now, the highlight of the movie, for me personally, is Joey King. Joey King, of course, a lot of people know her from different things. Basically, I have a personal connection to Joey King because she played Ramona. Actually, she did the Ramona Quimby character in Ramona and Beezus, the movie with Selena Gomez that came out a couple of years ago. And, of course, I have a affinity for Ramona and always have. I grew up reading the books. I was reading Beverly Cleary and Judy Bloom when I was growing up. So I was really excited, obviously, for How to Eat Fried Worms, and it was really awesome. Not had a Super Fudge movie yet. No more Ramona movies yet, but hopefully it's coming soon. But then again, who knows at this point. So that's how you know Joey King, and most people would know Joey King as young Talia al Ghul in uh, The Dark Knight Rises. So that's another way you can see Joey King. Joey King was... The voice of the China Doll, and of course she was at the very beginning during uh, Franco's magic show. She was the girl in the wheelchair, obviously, which is a nice foreshadowing. It was really awesome to be able to see her and Zach Braff and Michelle Williams in the black and white scenes, which looked unbelievable before we got to Oz. So really well done movie, and it was great the second time, just like it was the first. And honestly, I'll say another thing about the movies for this weekend. If you have any reservations about if you're going to like Dead Man Down, honestly, go into it thinking it's going to be just a slam-bang action movie. You're going to enjoy yourself, honestly. You really will. And completely unlike Snitch, which was Dwayne Johnson's movie, and everybody was playing it up as going to be an action movie, and it definitely wasn't. It was a hardcore drama, and... Very well done if you knew what you are getting yourself into. So, a lot of things are coming out. And of course, Friday, I finally get, finally get my movie. I've been waiting forever for the incredible Burt Wonderstone. And I'm really excited. It's finally happening. 
I, of course, as everyone well knows, anybody that follows these videos or knows me personally, or both, would realize I'm a big Magic fan. Obviously, a big Penn & Teller fan, but I'm a big Magic fan all around the boards, and it's really interesting because actually watching the credits and knowing that apparently he was on Kimmel the other night, promoting Franco was, thanks AJ told me that, there was a magic consultant for the film, and it was Lance Burton, and that's really cool. He actually did the magic consulting for Oz, just like the magic consulting for Burt Wonderstone was David Copperfield, and Copperfield's actually in the movie, too, so that's really cool. I really am excited for this film. I love Steve Carell. I love Alan Arkin. I love PC... Ah, uh, wow, long day. I love Steve Buscemi, and I really like, really like Jim Carrey, especially because I haven't seen him in a while, and I think the last thing Carrie did was <sighs> Philip Morris, which I absolutely love. That movie's phenomenal. It's not for everyone at all, but if you want to see a really well-done comedy that's very, very inappropriate, go watch I Love You, Philip Morris. It was Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, and I love that movie. It's awesome, and it's very well done. Like the messed up subject matter for some, some people might be too off for them, but if you get past that, honestly, it's really good. Check it out. Carrie is a great actor, and most people don't give him credit. Carrie gets credit for acting about like Adam Sandler does. Sandler obviously known for the comedies and the bad comedies that happened after the mid-90s and early 2000s. Sandler's last good movie, of course, was Funny People. But, um, and most people don't agree with me on that when it comes down to it, but when there's basically been a lot of movies that Sandler's pretty much just gone through the motions. Jim Carrey's completely different, though. His shtick still works, and I'm very happy to see him performing as the character Steve Gray, which, of course, is like a David Blaine, Chris Angel hybrid, and I'm really excited for it. It's going to be an awesome movie. And The Call, um, no relation to the Backstreet Boys song of the same name, it's going to be coming out on Friday as well. Nicole, of course, has Morse Chestnut, Abigail Breslin, David Otunga in a small role, hopefully probably about as small as uh, Wade Barrett's role in Dead Man Down, and obviously starring Halle Berry. So, looks good. Might be bad, might be good. We don't know exactly. The trailer really uh, kind of drilled in my head. Not as bad as the Oblivion trailer, but nothing's as bad as the Oblivion trailer right now when it comes to being drilled into my head and seen so many times. But, watching trailers today, obviously. Cannot wait for Iron Man 3. It looks amazing. Obviously, I am absolutely, like, waiting on pins and needles for May 10th right now because I cannot wait to see The Great Gatsby. It's going to be amazing. My girl's in it, obviously, with Decap and Tobey Maguire. Joel Edgerton, it looks excellent, and I cannot wait to see it. So, obviously, if you don't know who my girl is, obviously, you realize that it's Carrie Mulligan. So, Carrie Mulligan, absolutely gorgeous, absolutely incredible actress, and her time is coming soon. So, I was talking about Franco, and he he's actually the lead in the Harmony Korine movie, Spring Breakers, which is getting a lot of buzz right now, and I hope we get to see it sometime before the year is over. It's basically the story where he's plays a drug deal by the name of Alien, and the movie also stars Rachel Corrine as well as Vanessa Hudgens, Selena Gomez. It's going to be a really well done movie, and what I'm hearing about it is not just some stupid teenager movie, it's actually going to be a really well done artsy film, and I'm excited for that, it's going to be great. So, that's a lot of hodgepodge all about nothing at this point, guys. So... Beat Ups tonight was not the greatest, I'll be totally honest with you, uh, service, well, service sucked, straight up, and, uh, basically, I'm just gonna say that, and that's where I'm gonna leave it at that, um, did get to play much trivia tonight, but it's okay, no problem, so, after movies were over, and after we, the debacle of Beat Ups, when we had, like, a ginormous, like, snow drizzle, it stopped in two seconds, Basically, we came back here and Mom had a sweet tooth, so she made homemade cinnamon rolls, and they were awesome, and I cannot wait to eat the rest of them if I get to them first. But, there's always that. Um, tomorrow, of course, B-dubs, the O-show, 
Wrestling News Source Podcast, WNL. I haven't decided what I want to do yet. And I still want to figure out what's going on. Um, stay tuned, obviously, because I got some news coming soon about this channel and about what's going to be happening to it soon. Going to be some brand new content you're going to see on this channel before too long. And uh, just keep tuned in, ready for it. Official announcement for Disney Springs has not been made yet. We're looking at tomorrow or Friday for it to officially happen. So every, all the news that I broke basically is going to be covered later on in the week. And annual pass holders, get ready because you will have RFID chips inside your annual passes. You will not have any more paper tickets. You will have plastic tickets now. And it's going to be awesome. And I'll tell you what, I've seen the Magic Bands. And there's a black and blue one, obviously. That's got my name written on it. And it's going to be mine soon, very soon. So, we got all sorts of things to talk about later on, and still trying to formulate exactly how I want to do eight parks in one day. Now, I have a tentative schedule right now that I will talk about in a later video, and basically, I'm going to talk to Len, and I'm going to see if he can come up with a better one, and a more fluent one that doesn't keep me on transportation for three and a half hours of my entire day. Because that's what it looks like at this point. That's what we're going to go through. Because obviously, I'm not going to take a cab because I don't want to pay for it. And direct transportation from Blizzard or Typhoon does not exist. So we have to do it completely different. I'm going to have to use different resorts in order to get from the water parks into the water parks. But that's the only way to really do it. And there's a lot of time I'm going to kill on buses. But that's how this mission's got to work. And we will talk about that. Actually, I'll shoot a whole video about that once I find out the specifics exactly what my touring plan is going to be. So, there's always that. I am continuing just to sit in the house and pretty much do nothing. Just lay around, do nothing, watch YouTube, listen to my awesome Spotify pop station. And, okay, I'll admit something real quick. I Actually, I've got something in the in the works I want to talk about later on, but I'll admit something. I love Todd in the Shadows videos. They're awesome, but I'll, uh, I'll admit that the songs that he doesn't like, I don't like them either, but I honestly have to say that they're somewhat growing on me. I'm not a big fan of Train or Maroon 5 or basically, or Pitbull. Oh, God, God, God I hate Pitbull. But those songs just stuck in my head and they just can't get out for any reason. I hate it. I hate it so much. But I'm going to go back and watch more Todd videos because nothing else better to do tonight. And I'm just going to lay around and tomorrow, of course, TNA Impact tomorrow night. The first live TNA Impact on the road. They're going to be in Chicago. That's going to be an awesome show. I'm looking forward to that. B-dubs tomorrow night. Uh, hopefully AJ wakes up eventually so we can make that happen. Of course, this weekend we've got... Burt Wonderstone and The Call on Friday. Friday also, we're going to talk TNA Impact. Saturday is going to be work until 6, and then who knows going to be what after that. And then Sunday, Mom's gone, and for pretty much a night. So she'll be back on Monday tentatively right now. So that's, that's basically the schedule at this point. So Monday is obviously going to be talking about Sunday... Sunday's events, whatever that may be. Obviously, I'm going to discuss The Celebrity Apprentice. And Monday is Raw. And, of course, three weeks to WrestleMania. So, a lot of things still to come with that. And I'll talk about that as we get there. But once again, thank you for watching. And until tomorrow, that's all i got to say about that.